Wow. Cecilia. Good, Lafayette. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you again. Two years in a row. When is History year? Month? Wow, well, this is our actual anniversary of performing together. It is. Yes, it's been wonderful. Who would have known? Who would have thought <laughs> that we would still be doing it a year later? A year later. And just wonderful work we've been doing. Yeah. So I'm enjoying working with you. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. And we are celebrating Women's History Month 2022. And um, we have put together an interesting uh, array of music, uh, either about women, composed by women, or has something to do with women in general. And it's so great to celebrate women. That's right. Since 1995, presidents have issued a series of annual proclamations designating the month of March as Women's History Month. All right. We celebrate Women's History Month to remind ourselves of the accomplishments of women throughout the years to our culture and society. And uh, so, you know, we have really thought hard about these pieces of music. Mm -hmm. And how you know we could add to uh, the, the 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 aspects of women, especially as they contributed to jazz. That's right. Because that's what we do. We that's play what we do. This music they call it jazz. They call it jazz. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that has been going on this year throughout society, or for the first few years, is these words to talk about equity and equality. Mm -hmm. And so I thought we just just throw a little bit of you know defining. Uh, words for these two definitions of, you know, very powerful words that help women to blossom in different areas, especially in music, okay. that they have not been able to blossom for the past. So equality means each individual or group of people are given the same resources or opportunities. Mm -hmm. Equity recognizes that each person has a different circumstance and it's allocated resources and opportunities needed to reach the same outcome. So we throw these words in, not as social scientists, but as musicians who are aware of uh, these things that happen. Uh, Those are some me. very important distinctions, right? Very important, equity and equality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. All right, so we're going to get started with some music, and we're going to do a piece of music by... A uh, woman jazz pianist that we don't know a whole lot about. Well, that's that's a, that's a shame we don't know a lot about her. Her name is Miss Shirley Scott, yes. and uh, she was an amazing uh, musician, one of the most m amazing practitioners of the organ that you'll ever see. And you, yes. you you were so blessed that you can still go online and see her tearing it up, Miss Shirley Scott. Yeah, not to be confused with Hazel Scott. So Who's another great, great keyboard, keyboard. Yes. keyboard player? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Shirley Scott was from Philadelphia, PA, and that's jazz organ capital of the world. That yes, was where Jimmy Smith hailed from, and uh, or or where he was located, and he influenced so many people to change to the to the uh, to the organ, either from piano or from other instruments. So um, this is one of the people that he influenced. Shirley Scott was known as the Queen of the Organ. She was born in 1934 down in Philadelphia, PA, same city I was born in, by the way. And um, she uh, uh, played on a number of great recordings with uh, a, a couple of great saxophonists, saxophonists. <laughs> and um, Eddie Lockjaw Davis is one of them. And uh, In the Kitchen was a hit that he had that she played on that record. And then later on, she played with Stanley Turrentine, and they made a bunch of soul, jazz, blues records. And uh, she in, in, ended up being married to him uh, throughout the 1960s until 1971. They were divorced. And um, she, she, very interesting lady. Um, she got her bachelor's and her master's at an HBCU in Pennsylvania called Cheney. University. You know about Cheney, right? I do know about Cheney because I used to acquire in one of my pieces uh, for uh, Mary Lou Williams, who we're going to talk about. They, have a, they had a really wonderful choir there. Uh, it's a beautiful little quaint college with a gate around it. It's just beautiful. And HBCU stands for? Historically Black Colleges and Universities. And universities. There's yes, lots right. all over. But she went to school there and taught there. And taught there later in her life. Yes. 
Yes. So, man, we're going to play this tune. I learned this tune from another great saxophonist uh, that I am so lucky to play with. His name is Houston Person. And this tune that, that we play a lot in our sets is called Blues Everywhere. Blues Everywhere. So here it is. All right. to a different kind of spirit, spirituality now, right? Um, Absolutely. We had the blue spirit, now we're going to go to the church spirit. Well, sort of. What do you think? The, well, I mean, it kind of mixes up like, with the Irish folk songs and how we often blend old folk songs with other things. We did that during Christmas program when we did Ode to Joy. Right? Yes, that's right. 
And that had been turned into a lot of different things. Uh -huh. uh, other people had taken it and reinterpreted it. But we are reinterpreting, actually, the Irish folk song, Lundarriere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, we are. And Lundarriere is also known as? Well, later on, that somebody wrote, somebody used it for the melody for Danny Boy. For Danny Boy, which many people know this melody. Yeah, it is one of the most timeless Melodies in such a such a beautiful, beautiful piece. piece, right? Uh, and uh, so, women have a lot to do with the perpetuation of this song and this melody. I grew up knowing this melody not as Danny Boy. Okay. I know it as a song we sang in church. Uh, he looked beyond my faults. That's right. You know, come to find out that the actual name was "He Looked Beyond My Fault." Singular. Singular. Faults. You know, as if we all have just one, one fault. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's possible. <laughs> um, and that piece was, uh, the words were actually redone by Miss, Miss Dottie Rambo. Dottie Rambo, who was a very noted gospel vocalist. Yeah. And she turned it into something else that, you know, a lot of people who are in to uh, the church, and especially church choirs, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. a very beautiful uh rendition but we don't sing <laughs> we're not gonna sing we're not gonna sing it that's right <laughs> and so she she uh recorded and published this song in 1968 okay and uh and like i said it, uh the women had a lot to do with the history of the song i'll give you a little brief synopsis there was a lady named jess margaret onright weatherly and she was from ireland but was living in the united states she had a brother-in-law her brother's, her brother's husband, her brother's brother, no, her husband's His brother. brother. There, you go. there you go. There you go. I'll get it right. All right. His name <laughs> Frederick Weatherly. Frederick Weatherly had written um, Danny Boy, the words, and used another melody. I don't think it was his, but he might have used another melody. Okay. So uh, Margaret was visiting, was living in the United States, and she came across some Irish his, uh, um um, Irish musicians, American musicians, but of Irish descent. Okay. And they were playing this beautiful melody. What is that? They don't know. Blah, blah, blah. It is something that their families have taught them right. forever. And it's just part of the Irish literature. Okay. So uh, she sends word to Frederick, her brother-in-law, and says, get rid of that melody that you already have for Danny right. Boy. This is back. Okay. Wow. And then they put it together. And then that's how this uh, that song was born. It was they found out later that the, that song had already been collected by a woman. Her name was Jane Ross. Okay. And she had interviewed uh, an Irish descent musician back in the mid eighteen hundreds, and had already collected it into a book. And that book had the song listed as London Derry. Yeah. Okay. So that's here the story. Go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to play it, and our music says. He looked beyond my fault. fault. But depending on who you are, you will recognize it for whatever you remember it to be. Right? There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's the wonderful thing about music. Here we go. All right. <laughs>
Together, they were quite a formidable couple in the business world of, of jazz. That's they, right. they had a uh, studio together, mm -hmm. and they called it Riv B Studios. Riv for Rivers, B for Beatrice. Right. Studio Riv B, and they also had a production company. And uh, they produced records, and one of the records, the first record that they did for uh, Mr. Sam Rivers uh, was a record called, an album called Fuchsia. Swing yeah. song, yes. and on this record you'll find this uh, this this wonderful piece of music, Beatrice, um, and uh, I just love this piece, and uh, I think you will too. Um, I just wanted to know that she helped manage the operations right. for her husband, and they had a love loving relationship until she passed, and that lasted for fifty six years. Fifty six years of marriage, and a lot of uh, musicians have spouses that help take care of their careers and move them on and help them with their businesses. And um, Beatrice was one of those women who actually helped Sam move his career along and help with all her business arrangements. And this is a beautiful piece of music. And artistically, in terms of how it's laid out, it's only 16 bars long. Wow. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the melody, it's so memorable. Mm -hmm. And the harmonic layout of the piece, those of you who are musicians who will find it's almost, a, I like to use the word ethereal, it's, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's, you know, kind of, it moves, but it's also harmonically hard to solo on because it moves in and out of different changes. You gotta know your chords to you play the song. You gotta know your chords to play the song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's one of the most beautiful ballads that I've ever written, and um, we're gonna play, for, play it for you now. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. You started it off, right?
song. You just sling song to pieces, Beatrice, from yeah. a Sam Rivers recording. There okay. we go. There we All go. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. All right. So All we're right. going to change it up again. We're going to do something swinging here, right? That's right. Uh huh. And another woman composer. And you know, know a little bit about her, uh, Miss Betty Comden. Betty At least Comden. she was instrumental with the lyrics. She was instrumental with the lyrics. And um, this piece is called The Party's Over. And it actually uh, comes from a musical called Bells Are Ringing. Mm -hmm. And it was a, both a musical and a film. Yeah, all right. Uh -huh. all right. Mid 1950s, right? Mid 1950s, right? Mm -hmm. um, Betty Camden was an American lyricist, playwright, and screenwriter who contributed to a numerous Hollywood musicals and Broadway shows of the mid 20th century. Her writing partners were uh, Ad Adolph Green, her mm -hmm. writing partner. Yeah. And their relationship in terms of musical uh, part, a musical partnership spanned over six decades. Mm. Um, and they are noted as to have been the longest running creative partnership uh, in theater history. Wow. You might know some of the old musicals that they uh, wrote together. Um, Singing in the Rain, probably the most noted, and On the Town. Mm -hmm. And um, this piece, The Party's Over, is from Bells Are Rain, a musical of 1956, and a film in 1960 um, the lead actress, who was also in the Broadway, uh, in the musical, Hollywood musical, I would say, is that her name was Judy Halliday. And for the film, uh, the love interest was Dean Martin. And um, we found out some interesting things, um, even over the last few days, <laughs> a few hours. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, there are a lot of this, uh, jazz musicians and um, you know, singers uh, did this piece. Doris Day is probably one of the most no noted uh, vocalist that did this piece, and um, Tommy McRae. Um, but there's an instrumental by uh, the famous Gene Ammons. Dean, Gene Ammons, who was a tenor, tenor saxophone player. And that's the piece that I listen for to for uh, improvisation and their interpretation of this beautiful melody. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was looking at the recording, um, that he did with this recording. I, I, I was curious as to who the piano player was. And I was like, wow, what was this piano player? Well, so I got online and I looked it up and found out there was actually a woman playing piano on this piece. Check that out. And I had never heard of her. Her name was Patty Brown. And I looked, uh, looked her up and she actually had records. She has records out. She's from Seattle, Washington. Um, and she played with a lot of great people besides Gene Ammons. She played with uh, Quincy Jones's big band and Oliver Nelson's big band. Mm -hmm. She didn't get very much attention, and she's a wonderful, wonderful piano player. Um, so I want to pay homage to people, to a pianist that most people don't know, didn't know about, including mm -hmm. me. Uh, until I heard this wonderful rendition. And rendition. you too, I didn't and, know about it. Yes, <laughs> I sent you the information in the text early in the morning, look what I found! Yeah, I was like, <laughs> get some sleep, Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I was just, oh, you know, sometimes I get up early in the morning and I do listen and, to and music. And she's from Seattle, huh? She's from Seattle. Oh, okay, so I know she must have knew, known Ernestine Anderson, well, who's living in Seattle oh, as well. Yeah. I knew this piece uh, from um, Ernestine Anderson. Oh, okay, she sang the piece. She sang it, and we, okay. and we recorded and, um, on, on a couple of CDs ago. Okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we picked it because there was a woman involved with the lyrics, uh, lyrics and then we found out a woman actually contributed, you know, uh, in terms of her improvisational skills. On a Gene Ammons recording. I'm looking forward to listening to that. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is called The Party's Over. Let's get it going. All right. Mm -hmm.
it's a little different, right? Like it is a little different, and it is, it is, and it, I would say it's definitely one of our most challenging, challenging pieces. pieces in, in the set, <laughs> and you've been known to challenge one yes. <laughs> with, your, with, your, with your writing and your arranger. I, I appreciate that. Okay. I appreciate that. You know, right. I'll do my best to, you know, play untitled you know, <laughs> and um, give tribute to those who are unheralded. That's right, unheralded. We've been using that a lot. To us. We've been putting this together. Mm -hmm. So here we go.
Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. All right, Cecilia. Woo-wee. Got to do that hard, hard piece. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you played it well, not live yet. Oh, thank you. Yes, very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go on. Oh, man, we're back to the wives. To the wives of you jazz musicians. And there were a lot of them who did a lot for jazz. There, there, we, there, I played with a guy by the name of Lionel Hampton, and I heard so many Gladys Hampton stories before I got in the band. That's right. I know a lot about Gladys. He really, she really uh, made his life very comfortable. Yeah, well, she was so smart business-wise. She was one of the early black female millionaires, as a matter of fact. Okay. And um, where, so her husband, Lionel Hampton, was basically illiterate. Um, and, but she taught him business. Yes. And she was great with business and uh, was kind of shrewd on the business tip. Yeah, but um, I, have, I know a lot of musicians who get uh, Social Security now. Okay, because 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 she she took care of that kind of business. Right. Whereas, yeah. whereas most musicians they don't have to do. Okay. Yeah. So um, and she was just one of many great women. Right. And uh, here's another one. Yes. Uh, uh, this song was written by John Coltrane. Or his wife. Or his first, first wife. wife. Mm -hmm. Which is a piece we're actually going to play. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Very convenient, right? Very convenient. <laughs> But actually, one of the, the most beautiful ballads of in God, John Coltrane's repertoire. His wife's name, his first wife's name was Naima. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, well, he wrote this especially for her. And, um, he also wrote a, 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 another piece later on for uh, her daughter. When he married her, she had already had children, and uh, she, he had, she has a daughter named Saida. Okay, yes, that is another one of his noted pieces. Saeed, the song flute. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this piece, in terms of, uh, I like this word ethereal. I mean, it's just, you know, the way that the, the harmony um, connects um, is one of the most, uh, not, it's, it's beautiful, but it's, and it's challenging, it is um, challenging to be able to pull off these chords and to uh, have a, 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 that sense. Um, I always find composition music composition interesting because you have to think of these things based upon what you're trying to write about and uh in terms of expressing uh deep feeling for something you know we look at you know all this beautiful art room art on your walls and you know uh, just thinking about you know how visual artists put things together but the same thing goes in terms of sound and putting harmony together you know we know from this piece that John Coltrane felt very deeply about this first wife of his. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Even though they didn't stay married, he kept up a wonderful relationship with her, and she affected his uh, later in his life when he became more spiritual. Yes. And uh, so she in, continued to have a profound effect on on him. And uh, even though later on uh, he married uh, the wonderful Miss Alice, Alice, Col 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 Alice Coltrane, the yeah. second wife. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is Naima. Thank you. 
Naima. Spirit thing, a spiritual thing. Oh that, my goodness. The next, the next piece has got a big spiritual vibe too. Yes. As a matter of fact, a lot of people sing this in church sometimes. Yes, they, they do sing it in church, and it's got God in the title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, this is uh, Billy Holiday's classic, God Bless the Child. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the full line in the lyric is God Bless the Child, it has its own. Mm -hmm. Composed in 1941. Um, by Billy Holiday and Arthur Haz Herzog. Am I saying that right? Oh, yeah, I think you got it right. Okay, Arthur thank Herzog. you. Okay. Um, uh, it, 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 historically, it, it has some meaning for Billy Holiday because um, she actually financed um, her mother's restaurant. Mm -hmm. She was making some money, huh? Yeah, I guess she was. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, a lot of uh, musicians and artists experience, uh, sometimes there's ebbs and flows in terms of how money is coming in. Mm -hmm. And um, when Billy needed some cash, um, her mother turned her down with harsh words. And harsh words were exchanged uh, between the two of them. And um, Billy said to her, well, God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own, mm -hmm. and walked out of a very heated argument, from what I understand. Okay. Um, she stayed angry for three weeks and before the whole song, before the whole song fell into place um, in her mind, and a lot of musicians do write upon the experiences that they have. Mm -hmm. And um, she rushed, rushed down. It says that she rushed down to the village and met Arthur Harzog, who picked it out um, on the piano as she sang to him. As a lot of um, uh, vocalists do, they hear songs and they say, "I hear this and I hear that." And um, the interesting thing is, it went on to be. Number three in the Billboard charts, uh, in terms of the top songs uh, that were purchased in 1941. Wow, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, Billy Holiday's God Bless the Child That's Got His Own. Mm -hmm. All right.
Sometimes people call me Celia, you know, or CC or C, mm. you know. So this piece is called Celia, but her full name uh, was Cecilia. And uh, Cecilia, Cecilia June Powell, Bud's only child born to Mary. She, he and Mary, his, his girlfriend's name was Mary Frances Barnes. Um, uh, and her birthday is October 23rd? No, yes. Uh, and I, oh no, the record was released in October 23rd, but her birthday was June 1st, 1948. Okay. All right. So I got all those tracks and those dates, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, and the other interesting thing about this piece, because it's going to be a little different than the pieces we've been playing. It's not, it's true. It's got a lot of more notes, right? Oh, got a lot of notes. Paul <laughs> was a great writer, but he had a lot of great technique. And he could, and like Charlie Parker, um, really was able to put those put that bebop language this is the serious bebop lots of notes in this piece <laughs> yes very challenging but a really cool piece because you know i like to listen to the the pieces uh, played by a lot of different artists and um uh the the thing that i found in terms of quality of the composition that it's sophisticated but still childlike Yes, we really, really reflect the child spirit. Yes, huh? It reflects the child spirit that, you know, people think, oh, you know, kids think simply. No, not so often. You know, sometimes kids are complicated. Oh, you know? I, I, 
I had and you might know. <laughs> you know. And and, and, uh, and Bud was very influenced by uh, jumping ahead of, after this conversation. One of his great influences, uh, uh, is a wonderful lady uh, that he and and Monk and other pianists of the time period spent a lot of time with. Mm -hmm. With Mary Lou Williams. There you go. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be playing a piece later on by Mary Lou. You know, but the interesting thing is, is that Mary Lou's uh, publishing company was called Cecilia Publishing. You know, so um, we thought we would. Uh, You're just all over the place in this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for once in my life, no. <laughs> that when you put it all together like that, you know, there's other uh, famous songs. Simon and Garfunkel. Guy, Simon and Garfunkel had a song called Cecilia. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I remember. Uh, I can hear yeah. it. Yeah. You can hear yeah. Cecilia. You're yeah. breaking my heart. Oh. You're shaking my confidence daily. <laughs> they don't. They go there with that song. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, this is Celia, Bebop Head, uh, challenging <laughs> by Mr. Bud Powell. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, All that's right, Buck Pound Celia. Uh huh. Something else. Yeah, man. All right, so we are coming up to our last piece of the set of our William, uh, Women's History Month celebration pieces. Mm -hmm. This piece is called What's Your Story, Morning Glory? And it's by uh, one of jazz most uh, celebrated. Yeah, she is celebrated, unheralded, but celebrated mm -hmm. as the um, premier jazz pianist, Miss Mary Lou Williams. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a project called the Mary Lou Williams Resurgence Project that I've been working on for many, many years that involves Mary Lou Williams, um, small ensemble pieces, big band pieces, and choir pieces. Um, we performed uh, all over the country, including the Kennedy Center. And I've actually arranged this piece a couple of times. I okay. arranged it uh, for a small ensemble, instrumental, small ensemble with a vocalist. I even changed the meter up for a big band arrangement that I have of it. Um, we changed the meter from 4-4 four, four to 3-4 time. I can't really wait to record that. Okay. And um, I should also say that I just won a Chamber Music America uh, grant called a Project Grant this summer. Uh, we'll be recording some of her small ensemble pieces, which Lafayette and um, members of the, my ensemble, small ensemble, will be uh, recording this piece and many other pieces that I've either arranged or dedicated to Mary Lou Williams. So we thought we would end uh, our, our women's history uh, set um, with this piece, What's Your Story, Morning Glory. And uh, Like that title. What's Your Story, Morning Glory. Yes, we talked a little bit about uh, the fact that often, uh, my mother used to say that to me. My mother was uh, born in Pittsburgh, the same town that Mary Lou Williams was. Uh, uh, she was born in Georgia, but she was raised in uh, Pittsburgh. Okay. And uh, it's a play on words. And morning glories, of course, are flowers. And um, so, you know, it's like, you know, they would address with their children in this way. What's your story, morning glory? Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the other thing about this piece that it's a blues in D flat. Yeah, very popular key. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who are musicians, you're probably laughing right now because it is not a popular key. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, we talked about uh, this piece that's uh, written in a uh, that's a blues written in a, a key that you don't normally hear. Yeah. Um, but I played it in other keys. This piece? Yes. Oh, okay. And um, um, yeah, because when I do it with a vocalist, you know, they want to change the keys up on me. <laughs> Good old vocalist. You, vocalist. <laughs> you love them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I always like it best in this key because it makes you explore uh -huh. blues in another key that you would not normally do. Yeah. Uh, and it's a beautiful melody. Yeah. All right. Like, yeah. Like. So mm -hmm. we've done. Uh, we're gonna end with this piece, and I hope to see you all again. We, as you know, we have a. A lot of these uh, concerts that we have online, and I hope you, that you look us up, especially on Lafayette's site. I also have a new uh, YouTube site uh, called the Cecilia Smith One on YouTube. There's only one piece on it right now, but we're going to be rolling more things out in the future, right? That's right. We'll be adding to it, so check us out on <laughs> yes. YouTube. Uh, yeah, Lafayette has his own uh, channel on YouTube, and uh, uh, what else? We got, we got so many things. We got Facebook, we Facebook. got Twitter accounts, we yes. got... Instagram. Instagram. We did uh, TikTok last TikTok, week. TikTok. <laughs> all that stuff. We're out yes. there. And then check out our records. Yes. They're all still out there for sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you very much for joining us this uh, today. And um, we hope to see you in the future uh, with one of our sets. All right. Here we all go. Right.
nice to see you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody. All right, thank you.